Good morning, everybody. You're very welcome to our Tuesday morning reflection, um, our Advent reflection as we journey together through this season in joyful anticipation um, at the arrival of our Messiah, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. This morning we're in John's Gospel in the very first chapter, verses 1 to 34. So we've got a wee chunk this morning to get stuck into. Before we begin, let's just pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your your word is timeless, um, that it never changes, um, that you speak to us today as you have done to uh, our, our Christians and our, and our family um, of believers throughout all generations. So speak to each one of us this morning, wherever we may be watching or listening. May you be upon us, rest upon us in your mighty spirit this morning. Amen. Amen. So we begin at uh, the first chapter of John, um, at the very first verse. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe in it, believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who made him known. The testimony of John the Baptist. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing, the Lamb of God. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came to baptise him with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit of descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John had a very particular role in uh, the, the ministry of Jesus. He had his own ministry. He had his own place within God's great big story. We could call him John the, John the Pointer. Uh, John the Baptist is his name, but John the Pointer. He pointed out Jesus. He pointed the way to him. He prepared the way for him. He pointed out Jesus as the one who was going to come after him. He came after him, literally, chronologically, he was born after John was. He was greater than John. He was the one who was the way, the truth and the life. The only way, truth and life. We have to remind ourselves, and I remind myself, that John and Jesus were actually related to one another. They were cousins. They knew each other. They probably grew up um, uh, together in, in some way, meeting each other. They knew one another. But in today's reading, we, we see them, we encounter them as grown men. And we, we read of John's ministry of redemption being in full swing. He's in the midst of his ministry. And John has caused enough commotion um, in Jerusalem to attract the attention of the Jews who send the religious leaders to ask John just who he, who he is. Are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Who are you? John is very clear about his identity. He's very clear about who he is. He's clear that he is not the light. He gives testimony to the light. He is not the Messiah. He's preparing the way for the Messiah. And they, the Jews, the religious leaders, should watch and wait for the one who is coming, the one who John is preparing the way for. And while the, those that are around him there, the visitors, these, these uh, priests and Levites and Sadducees and, and uh, the, the, the leaders who come to question him, um, while they are there and while his followers are there with him the next day, he sees his cousin and, he's, and he cries out, he points and he says, Look, here is the Lamb of God. It is he who will take away the sins of the world. That that man is the Messiah. John makes it very clear to his followers, those that are around him at that point, that he believes Jesus to be the Son of God. has been revealed to him. He knows who he is. This man is the Messiah. John knows his, his place in God's great big story. He's assured of his identity as the voice crying out in the desert. He is the one that prepares the way. He's the one that baptizes with water. He knows he's not worthy so much as to tie the, the laces, the straps on Jesus's sandals. He knows who he is and he knows who Christ is. He didn't always know, we're told this, this is maybe a bit unexpected for John. He didn't always know that Jesus was the Messiah, but he points to the, the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan is the moment of certainty, the moment he knew when God said to him, this is my son. The moment that he saw the, the um, dove descend and remain rest on Jesus, the, the dove that uh, was the, the Holy Spirit resting upon Jesus. And John knew and heard that voice of God that said, this is my son, this is the Messiah. John knows that Jesus would be the one who would baptise in the Holy Spirit. Here is Christ, the fulfilment of all prophetic expectation. And John recognises him. Jesus is unexpected. This is an unexpected encounter here. Jesus doesn't always do what we expect him to do. He isn't always what we expect him to be. He doesn't always lead us in the way we expect him to. He doesn't always speak or talk to us or move us in the way we expect him to. And he doesn't necessarily answer our prayers in the way that we expect them to. He always does something that is in line and in will with, with the will of uh, the Father in heaven. But John is assured that this unexpected Messiah is the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who comes to take away the sins of the world. We can be assured of that. And, and John points to the evidence beyond expectations to Jesus Christ himself, fully assured of who Christ is, 
what his place is in what well, who uh, John this is John knows what his place is in the great big story of God and he knows um, how they fit together and how their ministries and um, will lead people in the way to go Christ himself is here pointed out the Lamb of God the one who takes away the sin of the world the one who is more than we could ever expect or hope for or fathom or imagine let's pray together Father, we thank you that you have sent your son into the world. We thank you for John as the voice in the desert crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Here comes Messiah, the Lamb of God. We thank you for sending your son. And we look forward in joyful um, anticipation and expectation of his first advent this Christmas time. And we look with more joy and more expectation for his second advent and he comes again. Lord go with us this week as we journey through the third week in advent. Prepare our hearts for the arrival of your son. We pray you would rest upon us in your presence in your spirit and go with us through this day and in the days to come. And it's in your son's mighty name and by your spirit we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. May you be blessed and may God go with you this day. Bye folks.